What is up guys, 70 Savage here, coming at you today with a very exciting project. I've been looking forward to this one for a while now. We are working on the skeleton for our van build. What that means is we are going to install all of the 8020 beams and connect them with bolts so that the structure for all of the cabinets in the van is completed. This 8020 skeleton is gonna contain things like the electrical cabinet, the water system cabinet. We're gonna frame it out nice and strong. So if you haven't heard of 8020 before, for and do not know what it is. It's basically an adult erector set. That's what they call it. When I first read that, adult erector set triggered something very different in my mind. Anyways, so they are basically just long aluminum bars that you cut to the proper length and then connect together kind of like Legos. I'm going to be using 8020 for 100% of these structural components in this van right here, which is a lot different than the last van build, which we did primarily with wood. We did do some stuff in the last van build with 8020, and it was super, super strong. The idea is that if the van does a complete barrel roll, all of the furniture stays in place. So the very first step of this project is actually already completed. We needed to design what the skeleton needed to look like and get pretty accurate in terms of the dimensions of the 8020 bars we needed to cut. Something that's very important when you're using 8020 in your van build is you want to design it beforehand. You want to design what the skeleton is going to look like and you want to do that in SketchUp. I made a video right before starting this van build on the basics of how to use SketchUp. It's like 15 minutes long or something like that. It explains just the bare minimum amount of tools that you need. After you watch that video, all you need to do is import the extrusion from SketchUp Warehouse. Somebody else has designed the extrusion. You basically drag that in and then you can just copy and paste it and expand them and contract them. You don't want to just buy a bunch of this stuff and start cutting it. It's too expensive to be making that many mistakes. You're going to save a ton of money if you design your skeleton in SketchUp. So it looks like I lost the footage for this part of the video. Therefore, I am re-recording it while I'm editing right here. So I apologize for the change of scene. 8020 can be extremely daunting due to the plethora of connectors and profiles and different parts and pieces that you can get in order to make whatever you wanna make. That being said, for the first half of this video, for the entirety of the actual structures that we built, we only used four different components. That's right. We only had to buy four different things and that allowed us to create 100% of the cabinets in the van. First off, we obviously needed the extrusions. These are the expensive aluminum beams that you cut down to the size that you need them. We then have the roll-in T-nuts. Out of all the different types of T-nuts that you can buy, these ones I prefer the most. Basically, you can slide these into the slots of the extrusions and it allows you to screw a bolt into them. The next part we needed was angle brackets. That allows you to connect two 8020 pieces together. Now let's get into the start of the project. So based on that SketchUp design, we've taped out the floor in a way that resembles the cabinets on the passenger side of the van here. We've got the galley unit on the floor in the front to the tall upper cabinet right there. And then all of the electrical compartment, which is supposed to fit over there. Now that all of our batteries came in, we're gonna unbox them and then lay them on top of that taped out diagram there and see if that diagram is accurate and will then allow us to work our way outwards. So this right here is the setup that I use to cut the 8020 aluminum extrusions. It consists of a DeWalt miter saw, a DeWalt rolling stand that allows it to fold up and go up against the wall in my little tiny barn. We got one clamp that we use and then an air compressor to blow off all the dust. It's a little bit pricey, but you're gonna get super precise cuts resulting in the best possible setup in the van. Links to all of these parts in the description below. All right, our project for the day is done. We finished the entire electrical compartment with the batteries and the inverter in it. I've spent so much time in SketchUp that when I'm looking at this in real life, my brain is kind of interpreting it as if I'm looking at my computer screen. It's very weird. I guess the cool thing about real life is it doesn't lag as much. Quick deploy rotate tool. Nice. This right here is what the cabinet looks like with no batteries or inverter in it. You can see that I used those four pieces that I just mentioned throughout the whole thing. 
literally nothing else was used. The result is a super, super strong cabinet. I haven't tightened all the bolts down or mounted it to the walls yet. I can already tell that this solution for the battery cabinet is going to be amazing when I'm just off-roading, honing this thing around, and it needs to carry the 300 pound battery bank. By the way, I buy all of my extrusions in 97 inch length. I order them in bulk on Amazon. When you order these in boxes of 10, the shipping cost goes way down per extrusion. With that entire cabinet that we just built, this is all of the waste that we generated. These pieces are gonna to be too small to use for anything. So it has been about a month since I've been on the skeleton project. We had uh, three floors that we had to make if you saw those videos. And since then, this is what my living room has looked like. Very excited to start taking this stuff back out so I can use my couches again. So we have the entire passenger side done. Pretty happy with how this turned out. It is nice and simple. Something important with how I design my 80-20 framing is it's essentially one giant cabinet. This is the tall cabinet and this is the galley and they leverage the same middle joint here. Now, the reason I do that is kind of threefold. First of all, it's obviously going to save material. You're not going to need to buy as much 80-20 since you only have one section in between the cabinets. If you made them two, you'd have double the amount of extrusions. Second of all, it saves some weight, but something that not a lot of people get when you're using this stuff, it's really, really thick, right? This is an inch and a half thick profile. If you have separate cabinets, let's say this cabinet had an inch and a half on the outsides and then the electrical cabinet, if it were to have an inch and a half on the outsides, that's three inches just for the joining of that cabinet. Um, so if you use the same cabinets here, let's see, I saved one inch and a half extrusion and another inch and a half extrusion here. That's three inches total. That's a lot of space for a van, believe it or not. So the big things that we are designing around on the passenger side are the water tank and water system that includes a big old electric water heater, a massive three-stage filtration system, water pump, etc. We got our 24, well, 24 this way by 36 this way shower. That's going to extend the height of the van. And then we have a full height pantry. And in front of that, we have a little bench that's gonna face forward. So that we have a nice little living area here when we turn these seats around. Let's go ahead and get cracking. So pretty good progress for today, guys. We made this right here. This is going to house all of the water system. Pretty stoked with how this thing turned out. Man, those three floors really slowed this build down, but it feels fantastic to be making forward progress again. I want to expand a little bit on why I use these roll-in T-nuts as opposed to the standard slide-in T-nuts that you can buy. When I first started 8020, I started dabbling with a bunch of different types of T-nuts. These are by far the easiest to work with. You can put them in any extrusion. This is completely closed off from all different directions by just pushing them in and rolling them. Of course, I can't do it on camera because I have the camera in my other hand, but you can roll them in the slot and that little ball spring keeps them in place. The other reason that makes these things ridiculously easy to work with is this ball spring in the back here. So this thing just pushes in and out and what that allows the things to do are hold themselves in a vertical beam. So you can position it exactly where you need it and it holds itself there with friction. That makes it really easy to like kind of just line them up behind a bracket here, put them in the exact spot and put your bolt through. All right guys, another day's work complete here. We got the shower stall, the little miniature pantry thing that's probably gonna have a bunch of slide out drawers, our nice, big, comfortable, bench eventually more like a chair i don't know it's gonna be like a one person bench but the goal is to make it comfortable that's why it's gonna be nice and long and there's gonna be big cushion in the back the shower stall is 24 by 36 inches i have this pan in here right now i'm going to order a custom one because i don't think this one's super high quality so we did discover a slight problem today the left or the passenger side cabinet is 23 inches and the hallway is only 22 inches, a little bit less than 22 inches. And then this side over here is 24 inches, the same width as the shower pan. Problem is, if you have a smaller hallway than the depth of both sides, that means your drawers are basically gonna slam into the other side. This is one of those things that you can never really figure out until you actually have the van and are building in it because 
with my plans, this wasn't the case. I had a 24 inch hallway. Not really sure where that went wrong, but we're here now. So. So it's very important when you're designing stuff with 8020 that needs to be very structural that you're taking the forces into consideration. For instance, this is where my battery bank is gonna sit on this layer right here. So there's a ton of weight, 300 pounds of weight that are gonna be rocking around. Uh, a lot of the force is gonna be down most of the time. So I didn't make one straight beam here and then just bolt the platform that the batteries are gonna sit on to it because if those bolts came loose, the whole battery tray would like fall down and slide down. What I did instead was I made this out of two pieces and one of the extrusions that the tray is going to sit on is literally forced on top of this extrusion. It's sitting straight on top of it. Therefore, it cannot go down no matter what. Things you need to consider when you're designing stuff out of 8020. The framing looks pretty cool from this angle. Check it out, guys. This is actually my uh, final countertop here. Just missed it by a few inches. And by the way, guys, we are still only using the exact same four parts for this entire skeleton so far that we described in the beginning of the video, the extrusions themselves, the corner brackets, the rolling T-nuts, and the bolts. All of this is built with just those four parts. So now that we are done with the skeleton and we shaved off that extra inch on the passenger side, it is time to mount the skeleton to the walls of the van. So what we're gonna do is mount as many places as possible along the walls where the extrusions touch them and there's a strong mounting point, as well as the factory bolt hole locations in the floor that we passed through our subfloor. There are two ways that we're gonna mount the cabinets to the walls. The first one, the most ideal, are these carriage bolts here. So basically it's just a regular 5 16th bolt, but it has a square head. That allows it to basically slide directly into the extrusion like this and lock itself in place so that it doesn't turn. What we're gonna end up doing is sliding the carriage bolts on these back surfaces here, drilling holes in the van wall, passing the carriage bolts through, and then using nylock nuts on the back side of the van wall. You can drill a little bit of a bigger hole in the van to allow for a little bit of play, which always makes installation a bit easier. The only challenge with these carriage bolts is that we can only use them in so many places. Although I'm gonna opt for the carriage bolts wherever possible, if we look at this beam right here that we're gonna use to mount this extrusion to the ceiling, there's no way to get a wrench in there and tighten down a nut on the back side. We'd have to get the wrench somehow inside of this metal thing, which would be a nightmare. So in the case where we can't access the back side of whatever we're mounting the extrusions to, we're gonna use plus nuts. These are what I used in the last build. These things are awesome. You basically just drill a hole the size of this bulb here. You slide the plus nut in, and then you use this special plus nut compressing tool. This thing gets sucked down and permanently attaches to the hole that you drilled. And it has some threads inside there that you can attach bolts to. So you suck this thing in, it's permanently in there, and then you can just bolt directly into it. So we've marked out all of the locations that we need to drill. All right, so the first two holes that we're gonna drill are plus nuts in this square right here. So I just mark the hole locations with this awl. And then we're gonna start with a little tiny drill bit in the awl marking because it's really easy to do it right with that. After we get the little tiny pilot hole drilled, we're gonna come in with the step bit and drill the proper size for the plus nuts that we have. First hole was a success. The plus nut and bulb fits in there. I decided to just do one hole here. Always make sure that you're checking in the back of where you're drilling because I had a hole marked over here and I realized that it's actually gonna collide with some of this metal and not work as I wanted it to. Let's get the rest of them done. So after drilling out each hole, we use this little deburring tool. It goes around and just gets all of the little scraps that are attached to the little sharp bits off of it so that we can later paint protect it. For this hole here, I just made a little tape bridge underneath to catch all of that shrapnel. Quick tip for you perfectionists out there. If you use these tape triangles, they catch about 90% of the shaving. So you can see that's a used tape triangle. Almost no shaving, so I mean, I'm still gonna vacuum down there. A couple of them did, but that catches the vast majority of them. Next thing we're gonna do is Rust-Oleum on all of the fresh cuts that we just made. Basically, that's bare steel, and we need to coat it with this stuff so that it doesn't rust over time. 
The way that I do that is I have this specific spray paint that dries really fast, but it's also the Rust-Oleum brand that's kind of meant for this particular purpose. Uh, I spray some of it in a small cup. I take a little tiny paintbrush and I paint it on so that it's on all the surfaces. If you try and spray it, it's gonna be a bad time, especially on the inside of your van. I do make sure to do about two coats, two or three coats, kind of just depending on how much is covered. And this one's still drying. You can see the dried portions because I did decide to get the matte paint, which I recommend. Uh, you can tell it's dried when it looks matte instead of glossy like the rest of the paint. And we're looking pretty good. So this right here is the Plus Nut tool. If you're doing a van build and you're using Plus Nuts at all, I highly recommend investing in this tool for your sanity. Link in the description below. So on every single surface that is actually touching the van wall, the edges or the backs of these extrusions, the back of this extrusion, this one right here that I'm gonna put carriage bolts into, I have this 16th inch thick weather stripping. It's that kind of closed, oh, that closed cell foam material and it has sticky on one side. It's a half inch thick because I'm using the 15 series. So I'm gonna put two strips and make sure that all of those surfaces are covered so there's no squeaking. Here is what it looks like when there's a full extrusion covered in it. It's also pretty cheap stuff. Link to this in the description below. Lesson that I just learned after drilling this hole, which I can no longer use, is that you really gotta make sure that you can get your hand all the way back there with a nut in between your fingers so that you can screw it on tried a few different methods of trying to get a nut onto the carriage bolt that came out of this extrusion into here and I just couldn't get my hands in there. I do have really chubby fingers so that's part of it but I'm going to re-drill a little bit to the right here so that I can get my carriage bolt on. Okay so for gaps like this where there is the front piece of sheet metal and then there is some space between where the back piece of sheet metal is. Let's say you wanted to drill a hole right here you're gonna need something to fill that gap. I've chosen to use this big bar of Delrin that I got on McMaster car. Delrin is just a type of plastic that's really easy to machine. And I got it in the exact same dimensions as these extrusions. So in that case, I needed a three quarter inch bushing in between the back piece of sheet metal and the 8020 carriage bolt uh, or the face of the 8020. So I need to cut a three quarter inch piece off of this big old bar. Then we are just going to drill a hole straight down the center of it with our super cheap drill press. This is actually only 80 bucks for this drill press and it works super well. It's kind of small, but for most of the stuff that I need, it works perfectly. Link in the description below. So then all we had to do was put that bushing we just made on the carriage bolt, which is through that panel right there. And we have a nice secure connection for this piece that wasn't all the way up against the wall. All right, guys, we have finally completed mounting the passenger side to the van. All the bolt holes are good to go and it's mounted in about 15 different locations on the floor and the walls. That honestly took more time to mount that stuff than to actually build the skeleton. So I was surprised by that. I didn't think it would take that long, but the combination of needing to machine the 8020 stuff uh, or additional aluminum parts for the edge cases and just getting the perfect locations for the bolt holes took a while. We are now on to the driver's side here which is gonna be pretty much the same. So I'm gonna blast through it. And then at the end of this, I'm gonna give you guys a full in-depth rundown of each individual bolt or mounting location, just so that you can see all the different types of mounting that I used. Wish me luck. So we have finally finished mounting these cabinets to the frame of the van, and we definitely learned some lessons. First off, it took me, I would say, more time to mount these to the van 
than to actually build them. And that is because the second that you try and interface with 8020 with anything that is not 8020, everything just gets thrown off. For example, let's look at this piece right here, which I made for the top of the kitchen galley. I need extra room for this drawer, so I made it out of a flat bar instead of a piece of 8020. Well, first things first, I had to cut the flat bar to length, no problems there. Um, and then when I tried to mount it with these corner brackets, I realized, wait a second, it's a quarter inch down, so I have to redrill a second hole into the corner brackets here. After which I tried to put the button head bolt in, realizing that the head of the bolt needed some extra room to actually be able to sit flush with the corner bracket. So I had to hollow out a little bit around the outside so that that bolt would fit properly. And then since I had tapped bolt holes into this flat bar, uh, I stuck my bolts through and realized, wait a second, the normal bolts I have are too long. They stick out and I need this to be flush mounted. So I had to go to the hardware store and get some smaller ones for this particular application. I see the complexity of building the stuff out of 8020 is about a three out of 10, maybe even a two out of 10. It's ridiculously simple. And mounting the cabinets to the frame of the van, including all of like the small fabrication that needs to be done is more like a six out of 10. It's still basic fabrication. You don't have to weld anything. You just have to cut some bars, drill some holes, but uh, it's a lot more challenging than just building the frame itself. So now I want to go over each and every mounting point to the frame of the van so that you guys have some examples of the options that you have when you want to mount your skeletons to the van. All right, so starting with the pantry and the little bench seat here, I have two bolt holes, just holes that I drilled through this part, and I attached them via an L bracket and a nut and a washer on the back side of the sheet metal here and here. I have two carriage bolts through these vertical beams, one right here and one right here on that sheet metal. We have a simple bolt hole through the floor. This is the factory bolt hole that I had reused in my floor project, um, attached to an L bracket, which is just mounted to the structure via a regular piece of 8020. That one was pretty simple. Moving on to the shower. This one actually took me a ton of time to do. So we have plus nuts, one plus nut right there, one right there and then two on this side of the beam. Um, and we basically had to fabricate these long flat bars so that they could fit up there with like an L bracket. And there's a bunch of little holes drilled in the L brackets there uh, to make sure that they line up with the flat bar. In the flat bar for these particular ones, I tapped holes using that hole tap bit. That thing is super, super useful. It drills really clean holes. And then up above, I actually tapped into the center of these aluminum extrusions with that same exact hole bit. It was super, super easy to do. And I put a bolt through there. Then I have another bolt into this extrusion here. And on this corner, same thing, bolt tapped through the center of the extrusion. I really didn't wanna lose another inch and a half of roof space here, which is why I have these flat bars. Uh, the shower's already gonna be pretty short and it's much nicer not to have to duck through the top here. Moving back to the water cabinet, we have three carriage bolts on this big extrusion. One, two, three, going through that sheet metal. We have two carriage bolts on the backside of these vertical beams, one on the bottom there, one on the bottom there, we have the flush mounts that are gonna sit underneath the water tank. I routed out the floor right here as part of the floor project and basically those flat bars sit underneath the water tank so the water tank can sit flush on the ground and they mount via L bracket here to the extrusion. And this one's actually kind of tricky. It's a flat bar that goes underneath this extrusion. It doesn't poke out on that side. And then I have a countersink bolt threaded up through the bottom of this flat bar. So it's flush with the bottom of the flat bar and it just goes into a Tina in this extrusion right here. On to the electrical cabinet. This bay right here is gonna have that 300 pound battery bank. We have three carriage bolts. One, two, three on the top extrusion. One carriage bolt on the vertical beam, actually on that one right there going through the sheet metal. One carriage bolt on the back of that beam going through the sheet metal and one floor mount. The tall cabinet on this side right here, similar but simpler version to what we did with the shower. We have two plus nuts with bolts going up through the top in the middle. Something tricky here, you might've noticed this on the shower, is I actually use this Delrin to allow these bars to sit flush with the roof so that I can maintain the roof lines. Um, so therefore I did have to cut an angled piece of Delrin 
to allow this flat bar to sit flush with the roof and still be bolted securely. Towards the bottom of the cabinet, we have one big extrusion that's carriage bolted to the sheet metal on that side. And then I bridged it to the structure with these flat bars and then an angle down there. On this side right here, I actually had to drill a plus nut into this structure as you guys saw earlier because there's no way to access the back of it. L bracket, through bolt, makes this whole structure right here very strong. And then the final one here is this flat bar that's just mounted via L brackets, modified L brackets, mind you, and then just has a hole in it in the center to go down into the floor. This needed to be a flat bar and not an extrusion because the fridge is going to sit here and I actually do need this additional height. So yeah, definitely more complex than building the cabinets. We used probably double the amount of parts as we did to build the skeleton out of 8020 itself. The 8020 was built out of four parts. I think the mounting took about eight parts. But hopefully seeing all of those different mounting types that I had gives you guys some help. So believe it or not, guys, the entire 8020 structure inside the van is 100% complete. It came out looking really good and it is insanely strong. This is by far the strongest set of cabinets I've built in a van. Not that the ones in Vangelina weren't strong, they were as strong as you could probably get for wood, but this is just a whole nother level. For example, guys, this tray right here is where the 300 pound battery bank is gonna go. If I put all of my weight on it, 100% right in the center, and just jump up and down, the entire van is bouncing around, and this thing is not moving a millimeter. Same thing with the water tank compartment. The water tank itself is gonna be supported downward by the floor, but in all of the other directions, I can just absolutely hoon on this thing. So the final proof slash example, the tall cabinet, which are notoriously wobbly in vans when you build them out of wood like when you move them side to side they tend to flex a little bit this thing does not at all pull-ups awkward pull-ups so maybe as time goes on i'll think about some better workout moves to do in here but this thing is a literal jungle gym. It is so strong. So if you guys couldn't tell already, I am ecstatic with how this project turned out. I highly recommend using 8020. There are links to 100% of the parts that I used for all of these cabinets in the video description below. At this point, I would never go back to building the structure of cabinets out of wood. Thank you guys so much for watching and I will see you guys next time.